Hey, Hope. <laughs> okay, I'll start. <laughs> hi, I'm Josh from uh, Caldera Forms. Um, say hi to Matt from Word and Press and Give. Hey, Matt everybody. Thomas, and say hi to Kevin from Word and Press and Give. And Kevin, you do like 14 other things for them. And the BP Business Reviews. Mm. WP Business sure. Reviews in the house. Um, anyway, we wanted to talk about some things with um, Gutenberg. I had written a post for Torque a while ago that was like, hey, I'm freaked out about Gutenberg in very nice ways. And I showed it to Matt, and Matt was like, I disagree with you, and I told Matt I would like to be wrong. Um, and so there is a new post on calderaforms.com that uh, now has my five things that would make me feel wrong about my original concerns at Gutenberg, because I, like Matt and Kevin, love the WordPress and would like for uh, this whole project to be a success. Um, like, I just, you know, have five very specific concerns I was hoping to discuss with Matt, who is going to write his own post about why he thinks it's all going to be great. And with Kevin, who's been really involved with raising issues, um, Matt just rounded up before we started, <laughs> Uh, GitHub related issues that you can see in the com uh, in the description here. If you have opinions you want to voice, and Kevin has commented on all of them. Right, Kevin's really doing a lot of research. I'm just say one, one thing before we start is since since I was quoted as the opposition on the Tavern article, <laughs> um, I do want to make it very clear that Gutenberg, as an editor, uh, separated from these other issues we're going to discuss, I think is well on its way to. Uh, being what we're looking for in terms of a modern editor. And it's starting to feel really good. If you haven't tried it since the first beta, update it, actually try to write an article with it. So many of the issues that were little quirky things that drove me nuts in the first version are a lot better. Um, so I will say that my full support is behind the Gutenberg team and anything I am raising issues about is all out of love. Right, and I think that's true for all of us. Um, and uh, when was the last time, when this is, we're recording this 0.7 is the uh, current version? I would have missed that last time. 0.7.1, they did a hot fix. Okay, the last time I attempted the Gutenberg challenge, which I have yet to complete, was at 0.6.0. When was the last time you guys took the Gutenberg challenge? I actually have not written a post, like a full published post in Gutenberg. In I just keep... When was the last time you attempted? Oh, today. So at 0.7.1, Kevin, are yeah. you at... Are you current? Yeah. So I'm like one iteration behind um, in my attempt to write an entire post in Gutenberg. Um, and I think it has a lot of promise. I'm with Kevin. So let's go to point one, uh, which we're going to probably blaze through quick because accessibility is clearly uh, the accessibility team put out a, um, a review of Gutenberg that was not glowing. And, but this is WordPress. Like We can't imagine that it's actually going to ship without those issues being solved. I don't think anybody is anything. Correct. Correct. I think that from day one, when they announced that Gutenberg was version 0.1, uh, they should have announced it as Gutenberg Alpha. Um, and that, that kind of set the tone in a way that was not helpful um, because people expected something that was close to finished and it was barely even started. And that's abundantly true with the accessibility issue unfortunately. So I think that's, that's an obvious one that will have to be solved, but I don't, I don't believe that's I mean, not going to be solved. You know, if we believe that Gutenberg is going to be part of core, which means it's part of WordPress.com, which means that it's something that Automatic cares about, Automatic as a company cares deeply about accessibility. So I don't think that they would ever ship something official um, that wasn't accessible. And, and I think it's understandable where they're at and the initial review of it. As someone who's gotten into accessibility a lot myself over the last year, just writing a truly accessible accordion uh, is, is a task. You know, to do it right uh, for screen readers, for keyboard accessibility, for ARIA rules, doing all of that stuff right to a T is a difficult thing on, in and of itself, let alone an entire nonlinear editor. Um, it's a monumental task from an accessibility standpoint. So I think it's understandable where they're at. Um, I think drag and drop is going to be another interesting issue. With, it had some hot debate a few weeks ago. Um, 
my my approach to it, at least what I think I've seen them doing is is a progressive enhancement um, from the perspective that let's make it work for everyone first and then let's make it better for some. And I think that that is what's happening with drag and drop. I think it'll get there, um, but we've got to make it keyboard accessible first mm. to start with drag and drop and then try to work keyboard accessibility back into it would be the wrong direction in my opinion. So I think they're doing things in the right order. Um, okay, so let's move on because that's, I mean, that's obviously going to get solved. So short codes is something that concerns me um, for a couple of levels. One, it's like, it's WordPress. And again, what Matt said, that maybe they shouldn't have called it a beta, that a proposal at beta for a WordPress editor doesn't support short codes, in my mind, was a big red flag because that's so essential to what WordPress is. And yes, it's a nightmare of an API. But without thinking from short codes first, I don't, it, it's a hard, it, it seems to me it's a hard thing to go back to. And then my other concern is because everything is a block now, it would be very easy to say um, block code, we just, you know, short codes can be, become blocks, right? That'd be kind of interesting. My concern is like enclosed short codes, right? Like everybody does these short codes that are like multiple nested short codes inside of them and they might span paragraphs. Um, Doc Pop did a pretty long news drop on writing in Gutenberg. And um, the thing was that he was like, I hate jumping from, you know, block to block just because I'm in another paragraph. And it was like, how to, and then my initial thought was like, how the hell do we nest paragraphs? like nest short codes across paragraphs now. Mm -hmm. This is my concern, right? Like I have this one um, short code plugin that's like bootstrap uh, short codes. It's like a real quick way to make like tabs and stuff. But I have multiple paragraphs inside of a content area. So check it out. Here's, here's what the state of it is that I just confirmed. Us. <laughs> There's a special block that's called classic text. It mm. is basically the time the existing tiny MCE editor in its own block. So you can paste in a full, you know, WordPress article as it exists today with short codes and it I just paste it in to give short code into that classic text block and it works. So in that one GitHub issue where they say, you know, it get, short codes are supported today, you just paste it in and it just works. That's what they're talking about. Um, from what I've tested, if you just paste the short code in like the new paragraph block, it doesn't render. It's like stripped completely. Um, yeah, it'll strip out the blog, the curly quotes, which is like a simple thing to fix. But so it was like, it, that was my red flag. Short codes is, is one of those things that I, I think is understandable that it will be deprecated over time because we are providing a, a, a replacement for it. Like a block is, is an understandable replacement for a short code and it should, we should progress to that over time. So the fact that they are um, supporting it from like, a minimum viable <laughs> standpoint. Like, it's not a great solution to have to insert a classic text block and then insert a short code just to like see your Git form. But us as plugin developers, we're gonna provide blocks to replace that process anyways. Um, so the fact that they, they have it working, I think is the requirement from my perspective on short codes. Um, Cause I do think they should be phased out over time. There's no reason we should expect users to write short codes. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like short codes as an as a user experience have always been really really bad, um, and WordPress core itself, I I was trying to remember the other day. I think the only short codes that WordPress core actually supports itself or creates itself registers itself is um, the gallery short code. Um, sorry, I have to charge my car. Um, yeah, but. Um, they, so the WordPress core, I believe, I don't know, I could be wrong, and I'm sure plenty of comments will tell me I'm wrong, that um, uh, mm, they only have the, the, the gallery short code. And so WordPress core itself doesn't really care all that much because now there's a block already for the gallery, and that gallery block itself is 10 times better of a user experience than the gallery short code itself. So if you think about it from that perspective, like, why would anybody ever want to support a really terrible user experience um, instead of this really awesome experience? Well, the reason why is because there are 
literally millions of websites over a decade that were built with short codes. Um, there are millions of websites that are dependent on short codes. When they don't render or they don't work correctly, the website doesn't work correctly anymore. And now you could blame that on third-party plugins because that's the that's the tool that WordPress core gives third-party plugins in order to insert dynamic content um, for the last 13 years. Um, you know, whatever the blame is, um, at the end of the day, short codes are there for plugins to use and implement and leverage. And we have a decade more of technical debt that we have to be accountable to. Um, so I am in the camp of that the Gutenberg folks have to be cognizant of the ramifications. I mean, you could just look back to the last time that WordPress core shipped uh, 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 an update uh, that negatively impacted short codes. I think it was 4.3.1 or something like that. It was a security release where they realized that if you put um, HTML into a short code argument, it would could, could be hacked. Um, they you know they patched that with a security release, which was good for WordPress. But like half of the <laughs> half of the world collapsed in terms of WordPress websites because so many of the the short codes were 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 being output that way. Right. Um, and, and so and let's use that as a segue into point three, which is meta boxes and as we start to talk about technical debt, um, because that was an example of where technical debt had to be like expire, but it, was a, it wasn't a real, right? Like we have this biblical concept of a, a debt jubilee where everybody just kind of agrees to give up debt at the same time and it all just kind of evens out, right? Like- I, I believe in that. <laughs> I, I went to Sunday school, I learned this stuff. Um, but the problem with when WordPress get, tries to knock out a, can, a technical debt is that it's a debt transfer. It's just pushing that, that transfer back onto all the people with busted sites. Mm -hmm. The plugin developers who wrote code that doesn't work, who just busted sites, to custom site developers, to small businesses, to large enterprises that have to fix that. So it's not a debt jubilee, right? It doesn't, like, we're all canceling debt at the it's same time. conservation of debt. Right. <laughs> Well, no, but it's moving debt around, right? It's moving it from core out to the community. And that's... It's kind of it, like the... Well, I don't want to get all political, but there's lots of political <laughs> analogies that I could bring in at that point. Let's shift the blame or let's let's basically release some folks from that debt and instead make the, all these other folks pay a lot more. Right. Um, that and has so, happened in, in recent political history. Right. And so let's not start talking about a AIG. Let's talk about uh, meta boxes. Um, the, I will nerd out on that, but not right now. Yeah. Um, the, so, but my point is, is meta boxes, right? Meta boxes are another example of a terrible, I want to use API in quotes here, because the problem with WordPress is that it doesn't have structured data. That was the proposal behind the fields at API, but nobody gives a crap. We only give a crap about things that you can look at. So, if Fields API was the thing, it would be really easy to solve this meta box issue. It's not. Um, this was. This is probably the largest red flag. Is that um, how do you make like ACF work? Right. Like I like I have a lot of pods allegiance, but like ACF is like on a million sub websites. The elephant in the room. And also, how do you make custom meta boxes work? How do plugins that provide meta boxes? still work in that like when i was working on my first article i went in and like counted all the meta boxes on the post type that had the most meta boxes and it was like 17 or 18. like that's a terrible interface like this is this intent to solve that problem is pure and is beautiful in all of this you got tabs man <laughs> on a tab train tab <laughs> tab tab so the, so the thing with the fields api is one, it's a great idea. It should happen. But even if it was available tomorrow, it would not solve this issue because these historical sites aren't built with it. OK, but my point is if it had been solved in 2014, sure. then mm -hmm. we would be way ahead of this. Yeah. We would have, we would have a way to be like, you had four years to get on the boat. There, there's some discussions going on just today. And like in the Tavern article, they're kind of making it sound like it's going to help solve this problem. 
it yeah. would have years ago. Yeah. Yep. Which just goes to show, just do whatever Scott Kingsley Clark wants. <laughs> if he says we need this, just fund it. That's the yeah. point of this conversation. Well, and also nascent. So part of my sort of origin story is my first WordCamp that I ever got accepted to was WordCamp Milwaukee in uh, 2014. So I went there and Ra um, Rachel Baker and Ryan McHugh gave a talk about this like new REST API project they were working on. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then Nason gave this talk that was like, we're going to have a REST API and we're going to have a fields API and everything's going to be structured and beautiful. And we're going to have an architecture in which we're going to build beautiful things. And I was like, yeah, this is amazing. And that only half of that came true. And now yeah. it's biting us in the ass. So it's not just listen to Scott, which is like my own personal mantra. Like I ask Scott things all the time, but like Nason was right. Yep. Yeah. I mean, um, one of the things that sold me on that is I, I just wrote or adapted gives custom settings API for WP business reviews. And to be able to define an interface just through a JSON object is incredible. And I could see that if WordPress meta boxes and custom fields were defined in that way, this would be a, a pretty easy problem to solve. But again, they're not. Right. right. We don't have, I mean, that's the flexibility of WordPress is that we don't have a declarative API for anything. Um, so let's talk, let's hone back in on meta boxes. The current proposal doesn't, there isn't really a spec. But as I understand it, Kevin can correct me, right now, it would be necessary for one or two things to happen. For some sort of backwards compatibility system that either turns off Gutenberg when there's a meta box, which therefore, why do we have Gutenberg? Um, or somehow brings in some sort of shim for these in time, or maybe everything has to be rewritten to the spec. That so we so let's start with the, the shim idea. OK. Uh, which I think Nylon was starting to attempt or gather data on um, from the, the most popular Metabox providers, ACF, CMP2s, pods. And a lot of those folks were you know, making GitHub issues and telling them what hooks they use um, to, to kind of start down that road. And I think he attempted it with ACF. The problem is, like we just covered, there is no standard way to handle all of this stuff. So to attempt to translate uh, these existing Metabox solutions through some kind of compatibility layer is a near impossible task, in my opinion. When they're spitting out HTML that we can't predict, uh, let alone all the custom developers you know, that have done these one-off solutions for large corporate websites over the years. Um, I don't think it's even enough if we could if we could successfully translate the top five uh, custom field solutions into mm -hmm. Gutenberg. You're still going to have thousands, hundreds of thousands of sites breaking. Yeah, I think though the the question in that regard then is honestly, when it comes to WordPress core, they I I from from the outside looking in and from a plugin author's perspective. I do think that what they try to do is they try to give nods to the plugin authors and the in and the theme authors uh, and any way that you build things third party. Um, they try to give a nod in general, but at the end of the day, they don't feel obliged or obligated to actually um, perform in a way that is compatible with third party solutions. And um, honestly, like there are people that build uh, things for give all over the place. And we are not obliged and we're not going to be obliged to build things according to the way that they have extended give either. So I don't necessarily fault them for not bending over backwards to be compatible with ACF from a technical perspective. But that's where my big butt comes in. But um, the truth is basically saying we can't do it that way means we're going to do it in React, and we don't really care what happens with PHP Metaboxes anymore. And that, to me, is not uh, the spirit of WordPress backwards compatibility in any way whatsoever, because the PHP Metabox is, is the heart and soul of how 90% of agencies, plugin authors, theme authors um, extend WordPress. Um, that might be an exaggeration a little bit, but it but meta, PHP meta boxes are a big deal. So uh, yeah, so that one proposal to revert to the old interface if a meta box is detected, like 
is anyone going to see Gutenberg? <laughs> if yeah. that's the case. Yeah, well, on WP Crowd the other day, Mike, Mike Corkum was saying, like, on so many of their sites that they build with their agency, they are adding custom meta boxes to the post format, to the post uh, post type. And it's like, well, then no, there's no Gutenberg there. And then, of course, on pages, of course, I mean, I, I like any any site that I built for a client when I was freelancing, like, I don't remember ever not building a meta box for the page post type. Like, it just, that doesn't happen. So Matt, well, but also, to... theoretically, like, Yo, like every page has a meta box because of Yoast or whatever is putting their SEO on there. But theoretically, Yoast and um, all-in-one SEO would, you know, make a box. We're talking about make a block yeah. or whatever compatible thing. Um, and then, I mean, this also, I think the one thing that we left out that Kevin would probably know more about is this idea that like, like when I was talking on that GitHub issue with Weston Reuter, he was like, well, you just make a block instead of a meta box. Right, that's the other solution is the blockification of all things. And then it's like, this is, I think, you maybe, and maybe I'm doing, I'm making you into the opposition, Kevin. <laughs> um, but this, like, scope, did you say, like, scope creep of everything into post content? I, I you? mentioned that there's scope creep out of post content that, you know, even today when you go to the Gutenberg homepage, Gutenberg sounds like a post content editor. Uh, even the make blog, yesterday that was published that was supposed to clear the air, it still presents it as a post content editor. And it's like, yeah, eventually it's going to do more. But right now, we're just making an editor, a content editor. And it's like, no, we got to start being clear with the community about the effects it has today. Even if you go back to the first beta, that was a full screen replacement. This is that, not that made no space for meta boxes whatsoever. Exactly. This is not strictly a post content editor. and from the public's perspective, it never has been. Yeah. And technically speaking, it has to be, right, you can only have one save button. And so that save button has got to suck up category taxonomies, meta. Oh, meta one of the I mean, this is content. multiple stage editing where you edit meta <laughs> from content. <laughs> Literally, that's a proposal out there. Yeah. Matt, I mean, do you want, that, why don't you go through that, um, that idea we talked about before we went on air about um, detecting or, or declaring support for Gutenberg. The yeah, I mean, I like I, I want to I've been meaning to create the the issue on it. Uh, the my my honestly, like even that suggestion. OK, so the base suggestion is basically that custom post types have to declare Gutenberg support. So by default, when you register a, a new cost, custom post type, the default uh, value for Gutenberg underscore support equals false. That's the default value. Just like um, showing REST is by default false. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Custom post um, by Which hasn't been yet, just to be clear. No, no, of course not. But I'm just, just saying, like, like, this is the idea, is that uh, that custom post types have to, just the, way, the same way that they're talking about how some themes have to declare front end uh, support for Gutenberg. They have, they've yeah. already, and this is actually already, I think, in point 0.7 or point 0.6 even. They and said the way, themes have to declare Gutenberg support for the gal like the full yeah. image, full bleed gallery thing, um, which was uh, an idea way back in point one already. Um, but um, the same idea is that that any registered post type, if you don't mention Gutenberg support, then the default is false. But then in order to override it, you have to say Gutenberg support equals true, and then that would assume that you want your post type to be basically overrun by the Gutenberg editor uh, because you're going to make sure that all your meta boxes are all, all these React based meta boxes. Um, but I that's think, awesome I, for I everything think, going oh. forward. But it, but, and it, it's everything, it's great for everything going forward and it makes sure that everything backwards doesn't get broken, but it's going to make everything backwards look like, Oh, that's that old crap that we don't want to deal with anymore to all the common users, you know, but that puts the onus on people like give, like, if we want to look forward thinking and moving forward with everything, then we're going to have to make sure that we have a Gutenberg-esque type uh, editor. And what I would assume would happen is that when I, with my give post type, give posts or give forms post type, I say Gutenberg support equals true, that when I get on there, the only blocks that exist are the ones that I want. That's the other thing. That's my only caveat, is that when I, when I, when I register my post type, the only blocks I want are maybe like the 
the default content based ones like the whatever like text box and gallery maybe uh and embeds maybe but um but and i can uh, de-declare those if i want um but then i say no the the bo blocks that i want are the ones that i've created myself because i have things that i need to put into this editor um, and move around and all that kind of thing. So you get all the benefits of the Gutenberg editor, which are awesome to be able to to be able to create a donation form in that uh, UI would be excellent. Like there's no doubt about that. Um, but I'm not there today. We're not there today. We're not going to be there in the near future. I mean, We're not going to be there when in, Gutenberg launches. And so this, let's say we've already crossed over into item four, which is backwards compatibility. Is that like, but I think what you're saying is like, and because I have little skin in this part of the game, because yeah, I have a really cool tiny MCE button for Caldera forms. I have that cool preview for Caldera forms. Like, f it, I'll rewrite it in React. Right, it'll be my opportunity to learn React. I'll have a block. Now, I think Kevin was getting out the fact that we could potentially have to maintain two different systems. Right, one for legacy, one for when it doesn't go to legacy. But, yeah, let me touch on that, but that would suck. Before yeah, I do that, I want to. I, I mean, want to take off on Matt's, bad. Matt's idea of like Gutenberg equal false. Mike Schinkel had a pretty elegant, elegant solution to that, which was to declare block editor support. Because we know that existing sites, if there is a content editor, that post type is declared editor support, right? Mm -hmm. So if we, we just assume that that means tiny MCE as it exists today going forward. And if you want Gutenberg, you have to specifically declare block editor. If, if we do that, I think that's the elegant way to do it. That's a radically but, different expectation, though, than, yes. I mean, at the end of the day, like s declaring uh, editor support means I get a little WYSIWYG in the middle below my title and above all of my meta boxes. Um, whereas if you say, you know, support editor, then all of a sudden my whole UI is different and I can't support PHP meta boxes anymore. So that's mm -hmm. why like, I, I get what that means because that functionality is already there. Um, and it's easy to extend that instead, but um, it, I think the, the ramifications of it are much more drastic than actively saying, no, I'm going to support the new Gutenberg editor, um, which I think is just a more intentional way of making pl pl uh, plugins and themes actually be intentional about the things that they do. And it emphasizes this underlying issue that an editor should somehow determine how a meta box behaves. Mm -hmm. uh, that the presence of the editor itself literally changes the internals of the meta boxes. And as long as we go that route or consider it like an option, we are going to be maintaining dual code bases. Um, so one proposal was, should an old PHP legacy meta box be detected? Oh, we would just revert to the old editor. That means that the calderas, the gives, the EDDs, the folks that are on top of their game and updating to Gutenberg blocks and making that a great experience, hey, they're also going to have to maintain their old PHP style legacy meta boxes mm. just in case their users are also using an old plugin that hasn't yet uh, registered a Gutenberg. Yeah. On Twitter the other day, Elliot Condon, the author of ACF, made a really snide remark, but it was actually very, very um, perfect in many ways. He actually, maybe it wasn't Twitter. I think it was maybe on GitHub. He basically was like, I wonder what WooCommerce thinks about this Metabox conversation. <laughs> I mean, the, like when you think about what would WooCommerce look like in Gutenberg, like that, that's not possible. Like in that's any way. That's a really cool system, right? Like that WooCommerce Metabox and the fact that it's super extensible and it's got all that built in Ajax stuff so it can update and like you're building like, like when you add variations, like variations is a post type, right? Like I don't yep. know WooCommerce that well. So you're like creating another post in the background via the admin Ajax. So that, I mean, that WooCommerce, like they that's, led that's the not, way. Yeah, they led the way really when cool it came stuff. to like building a meta box that rocks, that, that users actually want to interact with. Like they led the way years ago, you know? Okay. And nowadays it's kind of like, well, they're not going to support Gutenberg. So have fun with that. And they're an automatic company, so. Rain it, rain it back to backwards compatibility, because this is the question is, is this worth it? All of these things that we're discussing right now, right? Like, I feel very weird being in the position I'm in, because I am very radical RE, um, 
backwards compatibility. I think there are many opportunities in WordPress core where there are things that we should drop backwards compatibility for. Most, well, the easiest, most obvious one is PHP 5. I think that WordPress core should say you have one year to before we release an update that will not support PHP 7. Like 4.8.2 should have a warning in it that says you're on PHP 5, you will not be able to update to PHP uh, to WordPress 5 or WordPress 5.1 or whatever it is, right? Whatever's coming in a year. And then, right, okay, it, but you now that's a false equivalency because, right, part of that's because I'm jealous because I want all this cool modern JavaScript stuff in core. Mm -hmm. But adding, um, right, I'm not a React fanboy, but like, you know, it's cool that Webpack's there and we're getting that kind of modern tooling. Um, but adding Webpack to the build script doesn't mean that large legacy hosts, um, including some of the most popular ones, can't support WordPress anymore that are like stuck on PHP 5.4 or some other garbage. Um, right, so that's a bit of a false equivalency. But it does suck to me as a developer who like, you know, I have to write intentionally bad code because I have a mass market plugin that should support PHP 5.2, right? I could write a more efficient plugin that ran better, had better features, was easier to maintain if I wasn't, if I wasn't trying to appeal to a mass market and therefore having to support PHP 5.2. Literally a thing that ended security support last decade, almost 10 years ago. So the question is, is this, like it's a beautiful blog post editor. Is it, that worth it? It's not really that it's it. not it's not that's not that's not all that it is though. Because like I said, if if okay, so if if we get the the worst case scenario where Gutenberg is like, look, it's Gutenberg or you have a terrible UI. Um, if that or was like it, your site is gone because you used a custom meta. Well, you know that's Facebook. that that's where I, that's where I say that's just alarmist because they're not Gutenberg doesn't do anything to convert. You said worst case scenario. I don't actually think that's going to happen. Matt. No, it's not so possible. It's not possible because Gutenberg does not do anything to uh, to modify your post meta. Your post meta is still going to be there. Your pages are still going to load exactly as they were. Now, will you be able to change them? <laughs> the way you want to change them? That's a different question. Because oh, that, this is what I'm getting at. Is what is the what is the definition of backwards compatibility compatibility? What is the actual definition? Because at the end of the day, it's not going to break your front end site in those ways. No, I'm serious. WP because admin is part of your website. It's not like a second class citizen. It's a UI for how you create your website. It's a UI. <laughs> And I know, look, I'm thinking worst case scenario. I'm not advocating. I'm just saying, like, let's think worst case for a minute. Like, when you, if you think about what is backwards compatible, it's not going to break your site. It's not going to break it. Now, will you be able to change it the way you changed it before? No, not necessarily. Will you have to build something new in order to change it the way you want to? Yes, most likely. Like, that, that's, a, that's a real possibility. Or, you know. That's my concern. Is, well, here's my problem. Why? Here's my problem, Matt. What's it's, wrong with building something new in order to do something better? Here's my problem. Not everyone's it's a developer. developer. <laughs> is this gets back to the transfer of debt. Is that if people, like we've all done, right? Like we're all plug in developers now, but we've all done WordPress freelancing for at times in our lives, right? We've all experienced that where we're like, use the WordPress because it's backwards compatible, right? And we've all, and we all know people who do enterprise development who have built these really massive sites that like for that kind of budget, they could have made custom web apps, but they were like, you know, WordPress, like it's maintainable, like it'll be easy to maintain and lots of people know and, and so on and so forth. And to go to a place where A, you have to go back to all of those people who you sold a $5,000 website or a $100,000 website and say like, hey, it's all hosed. You can't edit, like we need to come back. Why the hell should those people who are that burned spend the money on fixing to WordPress 5 versus just starting over somewhere else. That's a concern. The other thing is if you sold a, if you, like it's one thing when you're making a website for $1,500 and WordPress is your only option, right? Like you can't literally afford to build something custom. People spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on their WordPress stack because even though they could easily build something custom, they know that like there's this great pool of developers that they can hire that there are outsourcers that they can go to firms that specialize in this for cheap, that they can plug in, 
that there are plugins and frameworks out there that they can do. If all of a sudden the available number of WordPress developers shrinks because most of us don't know React, right? Like, hey, I need to add some custom stuff to because like our business, like all the pages need to have these 17 fields and we need like some click and paste there, right? Or, like we need to like have a meta box that imports from a third party a API. Like that's a job I've done, right? Like have a WooCommerce section, we'll, like go and look up product information from third party API, right? And I charge them like a thousand bucks. Um, because there's so many other people who can do that. If all of a sudden you have to be an expert at React, which is like a nightmare of a thing to learn, it's beautiful, but... I, I mean, the other side of that conversation is, sadly enough, being an expert in PHP is becoming more and more rare. Um, and that and that's, I think, part of the big concern is that, that sure. PHP is becoming a legacy code base uh, that more and more new developers aren't willing to become experts in. But they are willing to work mm -hmm. in React. Um, and they are working uh, Angular, Vue, and whatnot. Um, well, nobody so, likes Angular. What are you, Roy C. Vaughn? The, I know people who like Angular. I, you do too. So. I know person. <laughs> I know person. I love. I thought Angular one was delicious, but having gotten and looked at what it offered, me, oh, I, is why I'm using Vue.js today. That we're not. Yeah. It's not. It's but, right. I mean, let, let let's also not kid ourselves in terms of. It was, was it last year? No, 2015, state of the word, where Mullenweg said, uh, learn JavaScript deeply. I mean, he said that in 2015. And in many ways, I felt, and I'm not a person who knows JavaScript deeply, but I felt embarrassed because I think that was a message that they were preaching in 2005 to most developers at that time. I mean, like to know JavaScript deeply, to tell that to your WordPress developers because they don't know it deeply. I mean, we're behind the curve in terms of uh, in terms of skill base in that in that sense. Um, and in, in in some ways, I think that you know pulling the scab off that is um, our skill base and saying, look. Things like React, maybe it's not React forever, but things like React are the future. And it does provide a far better UI, UX for the user. Um, we have to get, we have to just dive into the deep end on it. Oh, um, I just built an entire web app where the front end is in Vue.js. That's beautiful. I love Reactive Frameworks. And if I wasn't such a PHP fanboy, I'd probably use React because I know it, what it can do, right? Um, but this, so let's, we're, we're, we're bleeding into section five. We've already gone longer than we wanted to, but section five. Can I wrap up on, on one of my, my worst case scenario? Please do. No, Kevin, you're never allowed to speak ever. Thanks. Please, I posted, please do. I posted this in the meta box issue the other day that the, the real worst case scenario we need to consider is what happens when WordPress updates, introduces Gutenberg, and no other plugins are updated alongside. Because it's going to be the case unless we declare a long-term support solution or admit to breaking backwards compatibility and prevent updating, we have to figure out what happens when Gutenberg is introduced and the plugins necessary for implementing meta boxes are not. I, I, I'm willing to go Strong screen agreement. share. I'll go screen share right now on Gutenberg repo, new issue, post, post types must declare Gutenberg support. I can make that issue right now. Well, let's start talking about identity. I don't know if anybody will care, but I'll make it. <laughs> that takes us down this path of a fractured admin experience, and I think that's... But it's that's not, not nothing's go. broken. That's the thing. There's like, there's a bit... And, I, and I'm not saying that that's perfect. I'm just saying like... But for how long do we do that? 10 years from now? I don't know. I'm already not. Honestly, what... time. I'm not developing for two things at once. No, of course not, because I really believe... I, I mean, regardless of what we think right now, WordPress core team or, you know, whatever conglomeration of Gutenberg team folks that are not, not just automaticians, there are lots of folks, they believe that Gutenberg is the future of WordPress. Okay. I mean, and I, we just have to five. accept that. Like, no, I don't. I reject this because no. point five is identity. It's why is there so much damn WordPress? Why do people build, like, why do you and I have companies, right? Uh, a WordPress, a Give, a Caldera form. Because I talk to people every day who are like, hey, my company, my client's company, 
is building this thing that could best be described as a custom web app on a low budget. They're taking some plugins and they're putting some stuff together, right? Yeah. People get, I am totally capable of building custom forms for people, but they're not going to come to me to build that at thousands of dollars and they could buy my, they can get my plugin for free and add a couple add-ons, right? I could reverse engineer give for a client and it no, would be, can't. <laughs> it but you understand what I mean, right? Of course, encrypted. <laughs> I'm like, Caldera Forms, I'll build it tomorrow afternoon. Come on. No, but the point is that companies <laughs> say, I want to have a donation form, but I also need it to show up with a couple of custom things, and I need some PDF invoices, and you're like, great. We've got a bundle that does that. And you just go in, and, you know, they're going to use a contact form, plug in, but they're also going to use that to like build a custom registration for their event, right? And, and that's the nature of WordPress. That's what's driving WordPress. You know, remember a few years ago where we had these plugins that were coming out that were like these really clean, perfect front-end editors of content, Aesop Story Engine, um, Barley was one that was really cool. And like nerds like Matt and I, I don't think I even knew Kevin back then, this is so long ago, but like nerds like Matt and I were like, oh, this is brilliant. Like I was so proud to have you know, been a small contributor to Aesop Story Engine and Lasso. I just want to go on record. I love Aesop Story Engine. Oh yeah. It's called something else now, but it was great. It's called nothing. Uh, it doesn't exist. Um, Lasso, it was, it's called Lasso. Yeah, yeah but, but that's, this, here's my point. Is this was around the same time that like Visual Composer and Divi were taking off. And what's the biggest thing ever and what doesn't exist? Yeah. Because the regular people who are using WordPress to build something for a small business need something like Divi, need something they need a like UI. Beaver Builder, right? They, they need a UI. It doesn't take a marketing or a uh, economics degree or an MBA to explain why one of these things has taken off and one of these things hasn't. One solves a market problem based on the way that people use WordPress. And one, Wait, what is, what's well, your distinction there? The, yeah, because Divi is a front end that. editor also. Divi is also a front end oh, editor. Right. And they yeah. love the front end editor. And Beaver Builder right. is also a front end editor. And they love it. You're missing my point here, Matt. My point is that Divi is a thing that people put together because they can use WordPress and Divi to build out a five page website that looks great for a small business. That is very different than saying like, oh, I'm writing blog posts because who the hell, because it's 2007 and the only way to write a blog post is to start okay. your own. Right. So your argument is that we're going down the CMS route instead of blogs and Story Engine was blog focused. And my argument is, is that Gutenberg says, hey, remember when we spent the last five years convincing you that WordPress was not just for blogs and WordPress grew, built all this market share because of all the things that prove that to be true, that Gutenberg is building 2007's WordPress better. No, I disagree. Like, and I said that earlier. I said that Gutenberg would be an amazing UI to build a donation form in, and don't. And uh, Gutenberg would be an amazing UI to build what, a what, what, contact what, form in. What is inherently and, good about Gutenberg that makes building a contact form or give form easier? It's basically that you have a blank slate, and you are able to say, "I want to now add this." field and I want to now add that field. Oh wait, I changed my mind. Now I want to move that field up there and oh, I'm going to move it box. here. Well, but not no, it's not a meta box. It's not a meta box that? right now. You that's could do that with ACF flexible flexible fields, but right now and you know this Kevin, that's not the way give is built at all. Um, no, but gravity forms as a caldera does drag and drop. But those are well, I mean, they 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 do they do they do them differently, um, and but honest and honestly, I do feel that the the Gutenberg UI in terms of a user experience is far superior than any of the existing form builders out there right now. Just in terms, but just in terms of the 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 ability to move stuff around but, and add yeah, whatever content Gutenberg's you want. Not doing anything, like Gutenberg's not going to deliver a tool set that standardizes like complex donation form building. That's no, we are. Gutenberg yeah. provides but, the so framework. There's about Gutenberg that makes that easier than it would for us to just do it on a regular. Yeah, we like, could, we could, we could have. We yeah. could have, but we haven't. We okay. could have. And honestly, Ninja Gutenberg? Forms, you know, I, you know I, I love Josh to death, but, and Ninja Forms is not a bad word, but I'm just going to say Ninja Forms. Ninja I like Forms, I know, we yeah. all love them. James is great. They, they built a great, really, they call it, what do they call it? Uh, a no UI UI. 
Uh, they built a really great no UI UI with Ninja Forms 3. They went that route. And WB Forms also does a really good job in that department as well. I mean, I don't really, whatever. But it like they, they the P plugins have tried to do that um, and have done a good job. They have done a good job overall. I'm just saying that, and I, I'm not saying that like Gutenberg is, is, is like the best and everything else is terrible. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying that like in terms of being able to, to it's not about just the blog experience. They're, they, of course, they are focused on that on content right now, but forms are also content. And so you can build forms with Gutenberg eventually, not right now, not today. You can build whatever block you want, you know? Um, well, and they once have you a have, basic contact form on, on the milestone. But I know, that's kind of weird to me. Uh, I just, I don't buy the argument that Gutenberg makes form building better. I think Gutenberg is encouraging a, Gutenberg is encouraging a mindset that is going to make people want to be able to drag and drop and build forms yes. in Ninja Forms-esque way. But that doesn't mean that Gutenberg, Gutenberg makes form building easier or better. It just, it's, it's leading us towards a path that says we should be building things more visually than we do now. And yes, because I think that's what users want. Yeah, I agree. But Matt, but Matt, what I don't understand is like, there's two conceits here. One is that you don't have drag and drop. Like, like you're describing a, you want a form builder that functions like the form builder that I have. So build it, <laughs> right? Build it better. And then you're also arguing that like Gutenberg supplies those tools. How does Gutenberg supply those tools? Like React supplies those tools. But you can mm. use and use script to react. Yep. And then you plug in do, right? But the, the, like Gutenberg isn't just React sitting, sitting in the post edit screen. Gutenberg is a, a total UI experience. And despite what others have said publicly on Twitter and other places, there is a lot of design uh, expertise going into what they're building right now. And there's lots of design and use UX conversations happening around what they're doing. And so far, I personally have been really impressed with the experience that they're trying to provide. And okay, I think, so back up, back up, I think that up. they're making the experience primary to everything that they're, to all their decisions. And I don't think that that's necessarily wise, but I understand why. And I feel like that there are consequences to that decision, but none of those consequences consequences are going to mean that WordPress is going to break tomorrow. Like that's that's where I'm at. So okay. I will say that Gutenberg will make it easier for us to insert a block in which we can ourselves develop a really great form building experience. Yep. But I don't believe Gutenberg makes form building easier. Not in and of itself. Um, I think it changes the mindset of developers and users to start to expect that. Yep, it so does. Maybe, maybe Matt's point a little bit better stated might be, because my goal in life is to agree with Matt. Um, <laughs> and, no, but on a serious level, remember the, the opposition. The, the see, well, no, you're the opposition. My <laughs> goal is to, right, Kevin will always be on the opposition. Kevin, in the face of things that are wrong, will oppose us. But my goal is to, sorry, bro. Um, my goal is Human to be wrong. Pittsburgh. The conceit of all of this is that um, the conceit of all of this is that I want to be wrong. When Matt was like, "Josh, you're being alarmist," I was like, "Dude, I want to be wrong." And then I've got this post that you can check out at caldereforms.com/blog. That's like these are the five things that would prove me wrong that I'd like to see. But it comes back to this identity question of why are we doing all of this over like blog posting? Like, didn't we spend the last five years convincing Because people? it's not just blog posting. Right. And so maybe Matt's point, because remember, I want to be Matt, uh, or I want to I want to have the same theories as him. I want to see the world up through Matt's eyes, is that maybe what Matt is saying is that um, Gutenberg will create a design language, a more unified look for uh, that because we will all build in Gutenberg elements, Gutenberg blocks, Gutenberg whatevers, that everything will what one of the weird thing about wordpress is that like you can go into different places and everybody has their own tick and maybe that's good because it's a diversity and we can all choose between the 27 different plugins that do the same thing and find the one that's best for us but maybe matt's saying that the Gute gutenbergification of all things ui as gutenberg spreads the gutenberg style spreads the way that like the mp6 style spread before mm. that things will look more will all sort of function Gutenberg-y 
Okay, so you saw, you saw through Matt's eyes. I'm going to see through your eyes now. I think the reason you think Gutenberg is blog-centric is because blogs are the easiest thing to build, and that's where they started. So that the components that are in place now make it look as if this is a great blog editor. And they're talking about columns. They're talking about things that are going to make page layout more feasible. But we're at the very beginning, and I think that's your perception of the blog. Uh, okay. I think this is a great place to stop because I'm now Matt and Kevin is now Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even in the conversation anymore. This so if perfect. you're Devin Walker. I'm, <laughs> so I think this is a great I'm Roy C. Vaughn. Yes. So um, I, it would be funny if we did a joke where I was like, you could follow me on Twitter at, whatever, at, 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 at Kevin Hoffman. Like, at at RoyBoy812. <laughs> right. Um, you, should, you should go on um, Twitter and say hi, Roy. But... Uh, this is a really good conversation. Uh, I'm a, I have a post at cutterforms.com slash blog about this. Matt's going to write one. Where are you putting it, Matt? At wordandpress.com. At wordandpress.com. Um, you can I'm just going to keep complaining on GitHub. Find yeah, me. You, can, you can just go to github.com and Kevin's, Kevin's there. <laughs> but, Search, uh, show me Kevin, and it'll work. Kevin, can we find you on the Twitters? What's your Twitters? Kevin W. Hoffman on Twitter. And um, let, me, let me conclude... My yeah, part is by saying uh, kudos to the team behind Gutenberg. Uh, despite all of these things that are up in the air, the editor is coming along quite nicely. Um, I think that the community needs to keep a finger on the pulse of development so that we are questioning things when they need questioned. Um, but overall, this, this certainly looks like the future. Um, whether or not the internals and the backwards compatibility and all that how that works out is remains to be seen, but I think we're headed in the right direction as far as the experience goes. Strong agreement. And where can we find you on Twitter and likewise, Matt? Learn with Matt C. Awesome. Um, so again, I'm Josh. I'm at Josh412 on Twitter, at Caldera Forms. Um, these dudes do um, give and WordPress stuff. Um, we do Caldera Forms. Uh, thanks for watching.